beginning of October. The sun's pitched on top now, it's around noon, but the fish will pull up under these docks, wait for bait fish to come by, and um, they're starting to pull off brush. I'm noticing brush piles are getting thinner, so I'm starting to focus on docks and chase fish under those. Let's see what we got. Yeah, this is a seven foot dingo from Huckabee Rods. Light action rod so you can really bow it back and shoot it far enough or skip it under where you're wanting to is uh, the best bet for dock shooting for sure. So braid falls a lot slower for me. It's kind of a little bit, it floats a little bit more. The clear water does make a difference in the bite sometimes. So if we really can't get a fish to bite here and I've got brighter line, I will switch to mono and uh, have a little clear line or a lighter line. And sometimes that makes a big difference. Yeah, so I, I put the pearl white on there and I've got a huge school of fish in here and I'm throwing it into them and they're coming out a lot and following it or short striking it. And I just feel like I might be a little aggressive for the clearer water. So I've just went to more of a natural bait. Looks more like a minnow or shad and it's just not as aggressive. So some of those fish might commit a little bit better and take all the bait. So we're gonna try this different color here. I'm gonna let it fall. Those fish were saying they're 15 to 20 foot deep, so I'm gonna let it get down there and make sure I'm deep enough. And a lot of times you wanna watch your line while it's falling because you can see a bite they'll hit it on the fall and you want to be paying attention to that a lot of times you can catch one while it's falling and I just slow reel it up and if I don't get a hit somewhat quick I'm reeling it in and get another shot there's a mega school of fish right here those are all crappie all really good size quality crappie and they're following it and just not eating it there's something about uh, what I'm presenting to them that they're not liking people say color and stuff doesn't matter so we're gonna test that theory because I've taken several casts here and uh, no fish are eating this bait. They're touching it some, but I mean 10 to 20 fish are coming out and looking at it and not committing. So we're gonna go through here, try some different stuff and see if we can't get these fish to act like we want. We've just switched to a uh, slab hunter, two and a quarter inch monkey milk. I'm gonna try that. Uh, we had something with a subtle tail and they're following it really close. So while they follow these, it gives just a little bit of action, vibration making it uh, just that much more real. Let's see if we can't get them to react. We finally got one to commit. Look at that. Nice Grand Lake Keeper. It's a really soft bite, but she ate it. That fish will probably go right at 10 and a quarter or so. Just a good eating fish. And she did eat the old slab on her. So we're going to try that again, see if we can get a couple more to do that. We've, that's the farthest we've got so far. Super soft bite though. So we've learned that they're liking the tail action. We're gonna try a different style, maybe a different color, but uh, we're getting somewhere because they're hitting a lot more. I caught a good fish on it. So we're gonna change it up just a little bit. I'm noticing they're hitting the back end of it. So maybe something smaller, but, but the tail action is definitely getting their attention a little bit more. Okay guys, so we just rigged a pile diver on the live minnow color because we're still trying to imitate the bait fish, but I just seen that they like the tail action. So we're gonna, give something with some crazy action, a lot of vibration on the rib body, and see if we can't get those fish to start hitting. A lot of attention chasing the heck out of it. And while it's falling, that tail's just gonna be fluttering in their face, so that's also a, a bonus. And I'm just keeping an eye on my bait, make sure nobody's taking it. We just switched minnow minder monkey milk. We're going to slap it on it. It also has a little subtle tail action, but we got it split. And I'm going to see if I can bring them in there and if they're going to like the rib body and the action it gives. Try this minnow minder. Look at that. Smoke that thing. Went down to that deeper school. Nice fish. She took it also right in the top there. That's just a, another good eater. Good 10 inch fish or so, 10 and a half probably. Old minnow minder, monkey milk. Let's try that again, see if we can get something. One fish is a, uh, can be a fluke, but two's a, two's a pattern.
when they're super picky sometimes it's just one little adjustment makes a big difference just like that guys that's three bites in a row of shaking that bait up doing a little shimmy with the bait when they get close it will uh kind of trigger them sometimes all right guys so we figured out we've caught a few fish on this minnow minder um, giving it a little action but we're still having to beg them to bite so I'm going to switch to some lighter line and downsize the bait a little bit and I think that should trigger these fish. I was using a pink jig head but I'm, I threw on a chartreuse for this one and I'm still going to stick with the monkey milk. This is an itty bit slab hunter and uh, it's just I mean it's more than half the size so we're going to see if they go to short strike this you should be able to get a hook in their mouth so we're going to we're on the same school of fish same circumstances just a couple seconds ago was casting in all different baits and now we're going to try the itty bit slab hunter see what we can do with it all right that's where we needed it right there fish are chasing it pretty good into biting it I might have to take the old split shot off and gain some patience to let it fall down there so I've taken the split shot off and I'm just running a 24th and I'm gonna let this 24th fall down into where it runs into that school and then I'm just gonna slowly retrieve it that's as, as slow as it possibly can get with a bait that small so we're gonna really go tiny with them there it was Sometimes you got to try multiple times to get the right cast, but you're wasting your time if you don't get it in the right spot. There he is. So changing just from that split shot, nice fish too. Just switching that split shot and going as small as we possibly can is triggering these fish just a little bit more. We're going to see if we can't uh, do it a few more times, but that's just a decent little fish. We're going to see if we can do that a couple more times. Monkey Milk Slab Hunter, itty bit with no weight, guys. 24th letting that thing fall. It takes a long time, but sometimes it's worth it. Patience is key. So as you can see, guys, that's my bait right here falling. It's a super small dot being that 24th. Those are bluegill up there just trying to wreck the thing. Once it gets a certain depth, the perch will stop chasing it, and it'll keep falling down to these fish. It's hard to pick up being such a small bait, but there it is right there falling. And I'll show you guys. Oh, okay, here it is right here. It's coming down into this school of fish, and you'll see them come up to it. I'm going to stop it here short, and you can watch them come up. So here they'll come up. I just start reeling. There he hit it. There he comes up the screen. Just a small guy, but you guys get the gist of it there. Oh, and I lost him. <laughs> there we go that was a pretty good shot if I can get it down there and I'm headed right for them here that was a pretty good cast they're all coming up to it I'm going to make sure no fish is going to eat it on the fall and when I get to where I need to go I'm just going to talk them into coming up and eating it just really slow and easy on them There he is. Not a very big fish, but it's a good eater actually. Oh, nice black crappie. He took the old itty bit in there too. Those top fish look like they're mainly blacks, but we like some black crappie too. They fight just a little bit harder. So guys, I'm having to get my bait back there to uh, probably 15 or 20 foot back there off of a blue buoy. If I was the owner of this dock and could fish this dock and walk down there, it would almost be a lot simpler because you could drop straight down on those school of fish and stay in them all day long. But 
don't think you have to have a boat to fish docks. Um, if you have any friends, family that own docks, don't be afraid to go fish them because they're some of the top uh, places that I catch fish year round is in docks and slips. So don't be afraid to be able to walk some of these and just follow the lanes, get in between boats, just those hard to get to areas that you guys could get to a lot easier than I came from a boat um, and catch those fish. It's just a decent little fish, guys. We've sat on the same exact school for probably an hour now, trying d several different baits and profiles, and it definitely seems like this uh, little itty bit slab hunter, monkey milk, has been the ticket. Uh, when all else fails, me personally, I can go to a small bait like this, a small profile, and it'll catch the variety of fish that's in there, small and big. Don't be afraid to drop on uh, really big fish with these. If you have big fish in your lake, uh, I personally have caught my personal best fish over three pounds with this same 24th hook, 24th ounce hook and a small itty bit like this. So guys, big fish, small fish, they all will eat this bait right here just as good as any of the others. Um, we rotated through several. This is definitely that little tail action. Uh, seems like when they go up to nose it, if they try to short strike it, they have a lot smaller version or a lot smaller spot to short strike and they get that hook in their mouth just a little bit better for today's bite.